Uh, fairly quickly. I understand that the wheels of justice grind slowly, but it happens for the people sitting in jail right now. Mm. What do you make of the fact that the, the sort of general rules of electability on Trump have just not applied here at all? Given everything, I mean, Rick Tyler, in our Republican seat here tonight, is, is telling us that you know exactly what he thinks about this. But it's there's been no political gravity for Trump in this primary. Yeah, I have many thoughts, and actually, I've, I've give I've, me one because we're basically <laughs> okay, out, of time. out of time. Since 2015, I have said to myself hundreds of times, surely this must be it. Surely, 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 he could not survive the scandal. And yet he survives and thrives because he's protected by an enormous media ecosystem, his own cult of personality, and his own celebrity, enormous celebrity, that he carried into his political career. The only people that have ever turned him back are the 70 million plus people who turned out to vote for Joe Biden in 2020. That's the only thing that will stop him in the future. Scandals won't do it. Uh, uh, indictments won't do it. We are going to have to do it. A refreshingly honest pre-Christmas panel here today. Susan Rick and Svante, thank you all for coming on. And up next, border facilities stretch way beyond capacity and border officials are beyond overwhelmed. We'll talk to a Texas mayor about what he wants to see happen in the Lone Star State. You're watching Meet the Press now. Welcome back. Turning now to the latest in the emergency at the southern border. The White House announced that Secretary of State Blinken and Homeland Security Chief Mayorkas are being dispatched to Mexico in the coming days to meet with Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador, specifically to try to curb the flow of migrants to the U.S. on the U.S.-Mexico border. It comes as DHS has recorded a record-breaking 47,000 encounters with undocumented migrants at the border just between Monday and Thursday of this week. The trip comes after President Biden spoke with López Obrador by phone yesterday. The White House said that both leaders agreed that more needs to be done to address the border. Secretary Mayorkas had also been present at border negotiations back in Washington earlier this week as Senate lawmakers try to find some kind of way forward on a national security supplemental that hinges now on a border security deal. I'm joined now by the mayor of Houston, Texas, Sylvester Turner. Mayor Turner, thank you for being with us. I, I thought about you as we started to watch these numbers pick up this week. We hear about border facilities being over capacity, um, not all that far from Houston, Texas. What kind of impact does the city of Houston feel when the numbers spike at the border? Well, I think we're all impacted, whether you're a city in the state of Texas, or quite frankly, whether you're cities um, in other parts, whether you're in New York, Denver, Chicago, um, D.C., L.A. Um, I talk to mayors all the time across this country, and I think we all uh, face the impact. There's no question we have a clear immigration problem, and uh, we do need uh, Congress uh, to enact legislation in a comprehensive way uh, to address a problem that clearly exists. So there's no question about that. We've heard from some of those other mayors about the cutbacks and things like that that they've had to make in New York or Chicago, the way that this crisis has affected their budgets. What's the, what's the effect been like in Houston over this last year? Well, in Houston, the problem has not been as acute as what I'm hearing. And What do you attribute uh, that to? Uh, well, I think what's happening in the state of Texas, for example, is that the state, uh, the governor, is sending people um, by buses or planes, sending them to other cities outside of the state of Texas. So I think what you will find, if you're not one of those border cities, like El Paso, if you're not one of those border cities where people are coming over, uh, the impact for other Texas cities further away is not as acute. Uh, but when you have... What do you make of that, Mayor? Should those folks be staying in Texas? Is that the governor shifting what could be Texas's responsibility or opportunity as a welcoming state onto other places? Well, I think the bottom line is that we need a comprehensive immigration reform. Whether you're a Texas city or city someplace else outside of Texas, it is clear we have a problem, we have an immigration problem. And it is clear that we need comprehensive immigration reform. We've heard that over and over and mm -hmm. over again. And we need Congress to act. This is a federal issue.